What's going on everybody? Michael and Coco here to do some technical analysis on the financial markets. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, we're gonna be looking at the VIX, the dollar, gold, silver, Bitcoin, you name it. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, everybody, welcome back. We are gonna start off looking at the NASDAQ 100 and scoping it out quite far to the monthly time frame. But I want you to see this trend line that I mapped out and, and I'll walk you through just how much risk there is versus the reward as of this particular point in time. And now this doesn't mean that this is a for sure thing that's gonna happen. And I'm not recommending you to not, you know, buy dips and whatever. This is none of this is recommendations. It's just something that I've noticed. So in 2016, we had this, or 2015 to 2016, we had this pullback here, and it was about an 18% drop, tapped from there, and never really touched it until about the end of 2018, where we had a 23% pullback. And then here in 2020, we had a 30% pullback to this trend line, almost perfectly touching. And looking through history, the pullbacks to this trend line have been increasingly getting bigger. So we went from 18 to 23, 23 to 30. And now where we're kind of standing right now, um, the big thing that I want to point out here is one, we're going into October. Two, it's a, an election year. Um, so when you look at the seasonality chart on election years and even um, not on election years, you, you have pullbacks within the indices. So NASDAQ, S&P 500, et cetera. And the candle that's forming right here these two, this is a Western outside trading day or a, a bearish engulfing. Now it's the month, we still have a lot of time left in the month. So a lot of things can happen. We can have Congress come out with stimulus um, because the Federal Reserve basically is kind of nudging towards that, but we'll see what actually takes place. But this right here is a pretty nasty reversal type setup. So if, if, the, if we get the NASDAQ 100 to close for the month, below the low of this green candle, that's gonna set itself up for a pretty wicked drop. And how bad can this drop get? Well, looking at this trend line coming up here, and then you pull up the Fibonacci retracement level, this could potentially be somewhere around a 50% retracement. Now, that is very aggressive in a world of unlimited quantitative easing. So I don't necessarily know or think that that's going to happen, but it's still important to point this out. We have the 38% retracement level right here at 91.67. And I can tell you that these candles, this run up right here is this very overextended move bringing the RSI into overextended territory. Now, if you look back at the last time it was overextended, right? Here, um, before the March crash, and we pulled back to that trend line, and the RSI came down almost to 50, all right? And then here, when it was overextended, it was overextended for quite some period of time. But when it finally crossed back over, it went to a low of about 50 on the RSI, and that was a 23% reduction. Here, we didn't actually even get above the RSI, but we still happened to pull back right around that 50 range, resulting in an 18% loss. So this very well might be possible if we start seeing the RSI continue to move more to the downwards direction. And if we get as low as around this 50 range, that could really apply a lot of pressure here on this reversal type looking pattern as it stands right now. But we'll pull this up. I'm gonna have the link to this chart in the description so you can kind of follow up on it as the months progress. This is the NASDAQ 100 on the weekly time frame, and I pulled up the retracement level and you can see the price kind of battling around this 23% level, which is 11,000. 112 and we did point out this western outside trading candle we, we we basically traded that week um higher than the previous high and then lower than the previous low and we closed engulfing the entire previous week's body so very bearish and it was in this kind of upwards channel at a point we were looking at it as a rising wedge and we recently just broke below it so this right here is all pretty bearish and we just recently also closed below the 23 percent so this level down here 10,284 we can very well go into that level starting into next month maybe even potentially um later on this month if you do look at a seasonality chart as already previously stated. So September had a pullback to begin with, and then you see this ramp up, but then towards the end of September, which we're getting there, you typically see a ramp down to the late September into October. So we can very well come test this 38.2% retracement level here in the very near future. 
Here's the NDX, the NASDAQ 100 on the daily time frame. And what I wanted to really just point out here is we did close below the 23.6% retracement level here on the daily time frame, but we did try to make a run back up for it. It's been trading within this kind of consolidation area from 11,612 down to a low of really today's low was 10,936. So we were ping ponging around within this range. We did close below the 50 period moving average. We're below the five EMA. So this is looking pretty bad for the NASDAQ 100 as of right now, but really it's still within that consolidation area. So, you know, something can change. All right, so this is the S&P 500 and we're taking a look at it on the monthly time frame as well. Won't spend too much time here, but as you can see, we have this megaphone type pattern and we're coming into a massive area of resistance. Now, the current price pattern that's taking place here on the monthly time frame is very similar similar to what we saw on the NASDAQ 100. Right now, this as it stands is a dark cloud coverage. And really what that means is, as you can see here, we have, we basically matched the previous close of the last month, but we're piercing through almost the entire body more than halfway through, which is a reversal type pattern. This is all happening at a very interesting area of resistance. So this right here, it just goes to the narrative that there's more risk involved right here than there is reward. So really in short, what that means is you can look at it this two ways. First off, the current trend is bullish, right? So we have, looking just back on this chart, you see the line, yeah, we have some dips and stuff, but it's currently up. If you look at the, the bottom left of the chart, it goes from the bottom left to the high right. So this is just an upwards trend taking place on the monthly time frame. but that doesn't mean that the trade is bullish. The trade right here is actually bearish. And how does the trend change? Well, the trend changes when the trades start happening to change. And this very well might here be the starting point of a trend change. Now, this doesn't mean that we can't go higher, but looking through history, that's all that really takes place is you buy these dips, it goes back up. You buy these dips, it goes up even higher. Well, there comes a point in history where that might not be the case. And I'm not saying that this is the case right now, but you might wanna pump the brakes just a little bit looking at this megaphone pattern, dark cloud coverage. Clearly we've had this huge run up and we haven't really seen any pullbacks on the monthly time frame. All right, so here is the weekly time frame. And what I wanna point out here is those two candles getting rejected right here at the top of this trend line. This is what I'm saying looks like a reversal type pattern that we're seeing on the monthly time frames occur. And you can see these pullbacks right there shortly after. Really what we got going on here is I'm looking at 32.58, this 23.6% retracement level matches up perfectly to the gap down where we started really seeing pressure to the downside in February. Now it's been trading within a range that we're gonna go see on the daily time frame to set up targets as to where this price might go. Okay, so here is the daily time frame zoomed in here and what you know what do we see we see this big pullback and now we're seeing it tracked sideways within this channel and i can see it going one of two ways uh first we're below the 5 ema second we're above the 50 so we're just pinned basically within this very fine area and clearly the 50 is acting as support and the resistance was held right here perfectly on the 5 EMA. So the next few trading days are gonna be very crucial. Now, if we get a pullback or a breakdown below this, this 3200 level looks like a very strong level of support and we mapped that out previously, but just above that, keep in mind, um, we saw on the Fibonacci retracement level on the weekly and the monthly that there is some support still up ahead from that. But if we do get a pullback to 3,200 or that red, the pink box right there, that can very well set us up for a good buy the dip moment. Now at any time, we can have stimulus deal pass and that could really send this market higher. So if you're shorting the market, be very, very careful doing that. I personally would be looking to throw on short positions later down the road if we can come back up to this part over here where we can create maybe a negative divergence in the RSI, um, but I'd have to wait to see what really takes place. So if we get a break above, I think this is gonna be a good target. If we get a break below this channel, I think this is gonna be a good target for more of a major trade. Here's the VIX on the daily. I slightly adjusted it again. We had this big gap up, 
on the VIX and then really just kind of a crush point from there on after. And we saw the big gap down today um, take place on the S&P 500. So that's likely to see this volatility pick up. We said it was gonna be a crazy week. Now, if OPEX starts crushing the VIX into tomorrow, it very well might close some of these gaps below us, maybe even head into this 20 range here. But we will see what takes place because a lot can happen tomorrow. But I want to see it also punched in on a closer time frame. Here is the VIX on a 30 minute time frame. And I just wanted to kind of point this bull flag kind of pattern out right here. As you can see, on the 30 minute time frame, we had this big gap up that creates the pull and now we've been consolidating sideways. Now the last 30 minutes, we did get this crush to the downside and we have a gap just below that here at 26. So keep an eye out for it because if we start getting breaks above this trend line, that could very well start seeing the S&P 500 move lower. Now I wouldn't be shocked to get crushed tomorrow on the VIX and then potentially fill in some gaps, maybe even head lower into the 20 range or even potentially fill that gap that we previously had on the daily time frame. And if we do see that, that might bring the S&P 500 up to either a good area to short and then we might see the spike from there. Ultimately, long term, I think that we're going to see the volatility increase and we still haven't hit our target of 40 to 45 is where I originally put it. Here is the NIMO and slightly, we slightly game for a positive number here, but started with a negative breath as well. So um, we did say that, hey, this could be a potentially good short opportunity if we get up into this area. And, you know, I, I think because this is an end of day ratio adjusted on yesterday's video, it didn't show it above zero. And I think that's honestly because the chart wasn't fully updated. So we might have had that close over here and then we saw the big gap down and we were talking, you know, that would be a potentially good opportunity to put on a short depending on where we were as far as the price action goes. But we're back here at negative breadth in the market. We'll be keeping a close eye on this. The S&P 500 is right above it. And as you can see, it's just kind of sitting on that trend line right here, dating back um, to er, mid-February. So really just kind of sitting there, bare flag. And then we have resistance up ahead at that 3,500. So it's gonna be interesting to see what takes place here in the near future. This is the CPC. And so far it's been playing out pretty decent. We had this cross above right here, early September, and we're starting to see and have seen a lot of pressure on the NASDAQ, on the S&P 500, on the Dow Jones. So we've been seeing a lot of pressure take place. This right here we call a sell signal. Doesn't mean you have to sell all your positions, but what we did say was, you know, it's a good good time to take some profits off the table, maybe move up your stop losses, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, or potentially even hedge your long positions if you're familiar on how to do that. So we're still monitoring this and we're gonna look back at this um, for quite some time here to see, you know, what takes place in the near future. If we start pulling back down lower to that 3,200 target that we mentioned, that very well might be sending this a lot higher, which could be the contrarian indicator to tell us, hey, now it could be a good time to buy, but we will find out. The dollar index is a very, very, very important chart to monitor all the time. Now, if you don't follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter. I posted about it last night because we started seeing some pretty big moves in the DXY or the US dollar index. And that instantly started putting pressure on the futures market. So we saw the Dow Jones go down. We saw the S&P 500 go down. All the future markets were getting a lot of pressure when the dollar started moving up. And the dollar wasn't even really moving up to that crazy of a level, right? We didn't get above 94. We didn't close above there. But just to see a small move to the upside, pretty aggressive kind of thrust to the upside though, we started seeing a lot of things take place in other assets. We saw gold and silver go down. We saw the futures market go down. So the dollar is very important here. Now we're in bearish context overall. What I was talking about earlier was there's, you have your, your trend and you have your trade. And the trend right now is bearish, okay? We have the 50 cross below the 200. It's been going down for a long time, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the trade is not bullish. And in order for the trend to become bullish, you need the trades to be bullish. So this trade right here we brought in broke above the channel, consolidating sideways, looks like a bull flag, positive divergences on the MACD and the RSI. 
this thing looks like it's setting up for a potential move to the upside. Now, like I said previously, I will not be convinced that this is going anywhere until we start getting closes above 94. If we start breaking down from here, you know, I think gold's going to start breaking out. I think silver's going to start breaking out. But from what I saw today, there's just a lot of hostility, a lot of volatility in the markets. And I can tell that a lot of eyes right now are watching this dollar for its next move. Here is the continuous contract for gold. And what do we got going on here? We're still consolidating sideways. We are now getting rejected from the upper trend line. It looked bullish. It was peeking its head out. It was saying hello. Shortly thereafter, got crushed. That right there is a pretty brutal red candle for the day, so not too good for the bulls. However, like I stated, the trend is bullish. The trade, however, doesn't look bullish. I'm considering buying more gold if we start getting down to 1800 level, but now in my head, I'm kind of thinking I might pull just a little bit here in my portfolio if we start reaching down to around 1905 to 1920 might just be at the bottom of this channel and then we might eventually see a break but i wouldn't mind taking a very small stab here and even if we break down to a lower level that wouldn't mean that i'm not going to buy there i can buy some here and then i could buy some down there i'm long-term bullish for the price of gold. So I'll be keeping an eye on it, I'll watching it, and we'll be going over it at Monday through Friday. Silver, very similar to gold, not much action going on, but a pretty red day for the price of silver. We're down 38 cents, still consolidating within this trend line. And if you look at the past previous days, really it's just going horizontal, it's going sideways, it's coiling up tighter and tighter. Something's gonna take place. Something's gonna happen here in the near future. I don't know what it's gonna be. It could be OPEX tomorrow, or it could be you know the presidential election, or even the start of October. We don't know, but what all the charts are telling us right now, think about this, what all the charts are telling us, we have some very bearish type patterns on the monthly time frame for the indices. Okay, the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, even on the weekly. Then we have these consolidations taking place in silver, gold, and then we look at the dollar as well. We have all of these things consolidating and it's all preparing itself for a big move in some direction. Are you gonna be on the right side of the trade or are you gonna be on the wrong side of the trade? That's why we look at this every day because at this point, anything could happen at any time. As I see it for silver, I'm waiting. I would like, I just want to see the price go down. So in order for the price to go down, I would like to see a spike in the dollar. If we see a spike above the dollar, it's going to apply pressure on other assets. I think we're going to see the S&P 500 go down. I think we'd see the NASDAQ go down. I think we'd see gold and silver go down. And then there'd be a, a, just kind of a big run into the US dollar. Now, if that happens, we we to really see something take place we would need to get even higher on the dollar maybe even above 96 but that can take some time there's a long way to go 94 is that first level that we're going to keep an eye on all right last but not least we are looking at the chart for bitcoin saw some slow momentum today we came as high as 11,100 the previous trading day and today created a um very big indecision candle here. So this could be potentially getting toppy. We will see if we start getting above it. 11.2 was that kind of big psychological level. But if you look, it can technically go a little bit lower to around 11, where exactly actually where this candle is. So the 50 period is slightly still above the price action. We have resistance up ahead. This could be potentially a break to this area and then we might consolidate sideways for a move higher or we might get rejected right here. We're gonna have to keep an eye on this, but until we start claiming 11.2 and we start getting above the 50 period moving average, we close a couple days above there, it's gonna convert it back to support. That'll be bullish for Bitcoin. However, we're not there yet. So as of right this particular moment, I'm neither bullish or bearish. I'm kind of just waiting to see what happens. All right, everybody. Coco just wanted to say goodbye with me too. Thank you for watching the Daily Market Brief. If you haven't done so already, I'd really appreciate you smashing the like button, subscribing, even sharing the content as well. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter for more intraday updates. See you guys later.